This episode of Pucks Out Podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Action 24-7, Tennessee's only local legal sports book. Use code Pucks Out when you make your first deposit, and our friends over at Action will give you a 50% boost on your first deposit up to $800. That's right, an extra $400 when you use code Pucks Out. And this week, once again, some amazing boosts. We've got the Stanley Cup Finals here. You can find all types of boosts all this week and next uh, all over on Action. So, But give us in Action a follow on Twitter and Instagram to be up to date on all their promos. And did you know you can gamble with cash? Are you tired of waiting on your sports book? You won but can't get your money. No more waiting with Action 24-7. If you want to gamble with cash deposits and withdrawals, get started with Tennessee's local sports book today. Check out the link in the description. Once again, use code PUCKSOUT. That's P-U-C-K-S-O-U-T. When you make your first deposit, and our friends at Action 24-7 will give you a 50% boost on your first deposit up to $800. What are you waiting for? From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome, welcome, welcome into the most ridiculous podcast in sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hello. You can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this cold Mayday beer and let's get after it. I got that Yodel Liehi blue today. Ah, lucky. Hey, I need uh, that's, you know, speaking of, I mean, we'll talk about it. You know, you're uh, you're up yeah. crawfish, but, but your boy needs beer. OK, uh, your boy yeah. needs beer. Uh, that is a that is a for sure. So uh, make sure you know, I'll I'll yeah. straight up believe the crawfish boil. This is I'm not even coming for you. I'm just <laughs> I'm out of beer, buddy. So yeah, well uh, I'll be making a stop this week uh, to get some uh, beer. But yeah, got a dope ass crawfish boil coming up this week. Oh, uh, from, you know, celebrating more celebrating my birthday again. We celebrated this weekend, my thirtieth. Uh, it was a fun time. Uh, how you doing this week, bud? Good man, I'm good. I uh, just got back from uh, that uh, old USFL game in Birmingham. That was super dope. Had a had a good time, good time for that. Uh, you know, just pushing through through work. This heat, man. But uh, looking forward Ooh, to this crawfish yeah. boil, no doubt, brother, no doubt, man. I'm I'm jazzed up about it. it should be it should be dope. How about you, nice. man? Yeah, what are you up to? Good man. This heat, oh man, this heat. You're, I mean, I'm, that's kind of spoiling my what's that's my stick. But yeah, this heat has been absolutely insane uh but yeah so you know went went bowling had got some good drinks uh hang out with some, hung out with some friends uh got in the pool this weekend got a little bit of sun uh yeah, you know just yeah. uh drank some good drink some beer you know uh got some new stuff for, how's that soccer uh, game you know. how's the soccer game I oh it was good it was good it. uh yeah it was good um a couple complaints that i'll get into a little bit later or right, fuck it i'll get into it now uh first half was amazing uh low scoring game uh you know a nil nil game but the concessions were a hot mess that game. Uh, my wife got up with about maybe five minutes left in the first half to go mm-hmm. get uh, a drink because we let we forgot our free refill cup. So we had, right. she had, we had to go get in line, get a cup, and she wanted to get some food. So she leaves with five minutes left in the first half. I leave okay. when okay. the half done. I go over to the daddy's dog, get me a, a hot dog, meet her back at line over at the, uh, what is it, the Prince's, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Princess is actually and you know, not not too bad. She's so she does not get out of line with her food until the 85th minute of the game. No way. That's there was two concession workers. And by the time that she saw that, she was already like three quarters of the way there. So she, at this point, she doesn't want to like she's like, uh, uh, you know, stick it out, stick it out this long and then just right. Bounce. So Dang, at this point, dude. like we're, we're, I'm dre- we're both drenched in sweat. It's hot. Uh, I've already, you know, I've, I've finished my beers and went and got other beers while waiting for her. So we find a table to watch from the, like right in front of Prince's. We can see the field at this little table that they have uh, in, in the place. But yeah, so other than the concessions, uh, it, it, it was a great, great, uh, great game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Lost a little yeah, money. Yeah, I had I had the I had the uh, you know I had the money line for uh, Nashville. So sad to see him, yeah. see him lose there or tie there. I should say. Uh, yeah, I lost, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So it looks uh, looks like a good game. I was trying to kind of pay attention as I was 
drinking my way through Birmingham. So, um, you know, nice. don't know how successful I was in, in paying attention, but I did <laughs> see the score the next morning. I was not uh, excited yeah. about that. So, yeah. But don't forget to check us out on Patreon to support the show, get all the uh, extra bits. And check us out on Twitch where you can catch us streaming uh, and, you know, having some fun. Soon we'll be doing our, we'll finally get to our, our Seattle Kraken expansion uh, stream. Uh, but let's go ahead. Oh, and before we move on, let's get that fit check. Uh, what yeah. you got today, dude? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I went with the uh, the Houston Gamblers hat. I don't know if you can see this here, uh, but yeah. pretty dope little nice. hat. And, uh, you know, had to snag the shirt as well. But, you know, no, you know, me. I had to grab the USFL hat yeah. too, so I don't know if I was going to rock it next week or not. But I definitely wanted to wanted to show it off. But what? What's so, you, what's so you're, rocking, you're like the Rob. You're like the Rob Lowe of the USFL. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is that? I'm not sure <laughs> you know, what it means. Oh, I love Rob. Whenever, Lowe. He's great. Whenever he's Rob, great. whenever Rob Lowe goes to a football game, he doesn't support either team. He just wears NFL gear only. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I was not. I was not familiar <laughs> with, uh, with yeah. his. Uh, he, he's just a. He's just a fan of the game. He's just a fan you know, of the game. <laughs> he's a referee fan. He's just there yeah. for the <laughs> for the neutral party. Well, and all you, of his pictures, he look. All of his pictures, he looks so stern, just like watching with his arms crossed, with like a with an NFL polo and an NFL okay. hat. Okay, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to declare his allegiance yet. You know. Yeah, but yeah, I've got that uh, that Canucks jersey on, dude, and I've got my Stadium Series hat on. Uh, I felt like switching it up to a, you know, went through my closet. I was either going to do this or my Carey Price jersey. We ended up going with this. Okay, yeah. But, look at, look yeah. at, look at right. Looking nice. Looking nice. But all right, let's move into the news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice. It's time for news from inside the boards. The conference finals are wrapped up with Tampa beating New York uh, in, the, to the, in the series four to two. Uh, that you know, New York kind of choked there at the end of that series. I, I didn't think they were going to get dealt with the way they did. Right? Yeah, four straight games. I mean, Tampa came out to play hockey. I mean, we it's exactly what we what we said could happen with a with a team like Tampa. You know, I mean, a team that's been there before. Uh, against a team that really hasn't, you know, minus uh, minus Panarin, not a lot of, uh, you know, championship experience on that on that squad. Unless yeah. there's somebody that I'm like missing in my mind. But um, I mean, Tampa was there, you know, Vasilevsky showing up, dominating. Uh, I mean, not a lot. I think we I think we got to have all of our reactions uh, on the uh, on the Western Conference final already yeah. last week. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I think we're good, good in that in, in that realm. But um, yeah, disappointed with the way that the Ranger stars kind of, you know, crapped out towards the end. Um, so it was definitely surprising, but also not surprising at the same time. I mean, it's, you know, uh, Rangers looked really good in those first two games. And then it was like, uh, oh, the Lightning remembered how to play play hockey. So uh, interesting. But anyway, um, speaking of the conference finals, there's been four instances in the in the history of the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs uh, of a D-man scoring nine points in a ser- in a four game series where they swept. Uh, so four instances in, in, in Stanley Cup history. Kel McCarr has two of those th- this year, man. I mean, that, 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 that's, that, is, that is absolutely insane. Um, he is yeah. uh, just straight up dominating right now. Yeah. I, honestly, I, and we're going to talk about this in our games of the week, but I it wouldn't be surprised if Kel McCarr is a – Maybe not the favorite, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets that con smith, dude. He has been an absolute workhorse for that team. Yeah, not to spoil my uh, pick, I guess, but uh, I mean, usually the team that has it, it, that gets the con smith winner wins the series. So I don't think that he's going to get no. it for that reason. Um, <laughs> but uh, but he is absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, it, it has been. These two teams have guys that have played so ridiculously. Normally, we have a pretty clear front runner uh, for the Con Smythe going into it. You're like, oh, it's this guy's to lose. I don't, I don't think that's the case this year. <laughs> I think that there, yeah. that it could be argued uh, 
or four or five guys from each of these squads mm-hmm. uh, to win the con. Yeah. If, uh, if we just stopped and scored it right now. Um, yeah. I, I think that uh, Kale McCarr would be a, would be a solid choice though. So, I mean, again, uh, 18 points, something that has only happened four times has been twice him this year. Uh, and I also read that it's been, I don't, it was a long time ago, but we, we have a series with two Norris candidates facing one another. Uh, so I, I think it has happened, but uh, like maybe early nineties, I, I saw the stat, but I, I forgot to write it down, but uh, yeah, should be a good battle obviously i'll you know save some of those thoughts for our main topic of discussing that so for sure for sure all right guys we're gonna move into outside the nhl now that you know what's happening inside the boards time for the rest of the headlines with news from outside the boards charles charles swatzel wins an inaugural liv tournament I did not Swartzel. watch it. I did Swartzel. Swartzel. I did I did see that 17 PGA members got uh I guess kicked out of the PGA for being part of the LIV uh tournament, which is pretty insane. Taking I mean, their ball and going easy. home, huh? <laughs> yeah. Just absolutely uh, wild. Uh but you know, uh, the, all these players are still going to get to compete in the Open Championship. Uh because yeah. the criteria was set um before and so all of these all these folks met the criteria so like mickelson's getting ready to go to the open championship uh i think i think dustin johnson gets to go but yeah 17 guys uh were um were uh basically told you're not invited anymore yeah any any of our parties (laughs) however i do think it's funny that they suspended guys that resigned their membership like you don't you it's like no you don't quit you're fired no yeah you're but sorry sorry ha 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 can't resign idiot i love how they i love how they waited to do it 30 minutes after tee off like ha ha see told you we were gonna get you if that was your game plan and immediately you said as soon as the first person that that signed up for the liv you know golf league or, or tournament or whatever if you said immediately Hey, if you sign up for that league, we're going to have to suspend your membership. While I still think it's a punk move, at least you be, you're being real about it. You know, you're not, you're not waiting until all these people jump ship and then all of a sudden they start this tournament and be like, oh yeah, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so PGA handled it completely horrible. Uh, but I mean, to kind of rolling into that next one, the outspoken critic of that, of that, um, of that tournament and that league. Uh, whatever you'd call it, I guess, uh, tour, uh, yeah. Rory, Rory McElroy, he won the RRBC, um, mm-hmm. Canadian open and then had to take his, uh, his little shot at, uh, what is it? Greg Norman. Is that the CEO? Uh, because I think that's his 21st PGA event. Um, uh, that's, that's Rory's 21st yeah. PGA event win. And I think uh, Greg Norman, the CEO of uh, uh, LIV Golf, is uh, only ever won twenty. So he <laughs> made like a little shot at him, like, dude. And and the more and more, like, if you have a stance on it, I'm okay with it. But the more and yeah. more you keep talking, uh, Rory Rory McIlroy, yeah. you're looking more and more like an idiot each time. Yeah, it's almost like the world number one wasn't competing no longer in the pga it's almost right. as if the competition level has gone down for huh. Rory because most that's, of those guys have left that's an that's a you know when you when you want to tout um you know human rights and your you know your your competitors are or they don't care about that and they don't want to look at that um then i think you should definitely look inward because i'm not a hundred percent positive but i'm fairly certain that Rory McIlroy has some Nike sponsorships. And I don't know if somebody <laughs> should tell him what, how <laughs> Nike gets these, gets this stuff because he, I think that he would be, wow, that's atrocious. And I've got to give up Nike because human rights violations and things happening bad to other people are, he's against that. Right. So he wouldn't want to know about the sweatshops that Nike runs. <laughs> uh, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. not sitting here and agreeing that, hey, Saudi Arabia is this champion of 
you know, things going, going good or going right. But I think that if you're going to sit there and criticize this other league and people taking this other money um, for that, then you need to be able to look inward because let's say one of these guys gets $6 million and a million of this, you know, a million dollars goes to charity, you know, charity or charitable thing. So ultimately is that good or bad? That's what I, I guess I don't, I don't, I don't get why yeah. he's so staunchly against other people doing what they need to do. But you said it. You said it right there. Hey, the the world's number one's not playing golf with him anymore. So so every time he argues that he's the best, it's hard to argue. I mean, you don't you don't play the best. Um, so I think that that's a that's a big thing um, and and a really well, uh, really good point yeah. on on your side. Yeah. Uh, moving on now. Uh, another former ABA player dies waiting for insurance. Uh, ABA legend Sam Smith. Uh, passed away uh, after not being able to afford. Uh, I mean, he was. I think in the in the what the weeks leading up to his death, he couldn't make it to the reunion because he couldn't afford to make it there. Uh, he he was could barely afford gas money. I mean, this is absolutely insane that we're letting this happen to these trailblazers that yeah. led to what the NBA is today. Yeah, I, I mean, it it was one of those things that like I saw it last week. I was like, dude, we got to at least say something about it because I mean, you know, this is it, it's wrong. You know, Adam Silver and uh, and the league, we're talking about, a, you know, billions of, upon billions of dollars. LeBron James is worth over a billion dollars. And we're, we're, we're arguing, I mean, how many possible ABA players could there even be left that this is such, this is such yeah. a big deal that we can't, I mean, you've already, you've already let a lot of them die. Uh, so, so, I mean, every time one of this happens, the, the check goes down a little bit more. I just, I just don't get it. I mean, it's definitely just something that uh, doesn't make a lot of, a lot of sense to me. We're, we're talking about 60s, 70s, and 80s. I mean, this is, this is 30 years ago. Yeah. That these guys were, were playing basketball, um, and, and the merger. Was, I mean, I mean, is there any argument that the NBA is not the greatest basketball league in the world, which is a, a part in uh, ABA? You know, that's, uh, that's frustrating to see even though we're not big basketball fans i know that it's frustrating for for both of us to see oh no man the australian basketball league's pretty entertaining You're getting into it <laughs> getting into it yeah you big, i got into uh, it for a bit man there's a lot of lot of fights it's kind of like oh, a little bit of mixture of hockey okay. and basketball okay they take well, their hey. rivalries pretty seriously well i mean you know maybe i'll get up late or early i should say probably real real early games yeah huh? So okay, well yeah. I didn't know I didn't know you were getting to the ABL, bro. <laughs> um, you know I didn't know you were I didn't know you were you know such such a staunch proponent of uh, the Australian Basketball League. All right, they're, they're, they are some prime natural athletes. Granted, most of those natural athletes, uh, I don't really have one. I just kind of oh, bet. you're just, <laughs> you're Rob Lowe. Yeah. You're, you're Rob yeah. Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Rob Lowe. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm a fan of whoever I bet on that night. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. yeah fair. Fair. Uh, but now, who's, yeah. They, well, they are, who's won you some money? Who's won you some oh, money? Oh, the, the, the name escapes me right now, but I know once I see it, uh, uh, I'll remember it. I bet You're on them a yeah. lot. And they, they uh, I think it's the... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that's a. I don't. I don't think it's called the ABL. I think it's like NBL or something like that. Hmm. It's because I think I can't remember. Uh, that's baseball. Mm. I think the season's over right now. Oh yeah, it's just called the National Basketball League, the NBL. That's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the I know that the uh, Perth Wildcats won won me some money. And the New Zealand Breakers have won me a lot of money. Those sound, those names sound familiar. You know, your boys bet on it. I just, you know, I, yeah. did, I, I didn't, cons I didn't consider myself as big of a fan as you. So I didn't want to, you know, I didn't yeah. want to step on your toes and you start asking yeah, me trivia I, uh, about I, the league. Yeah. Uh, I was watching a game on YouTube and a bunch of cappers were like, oh, take the under, take the under. But then there was like two fights that happened. And these, and they were like, how talk about how like these are big rivals. And once those two fights happened and then they the guys didn't get ejected, they only got like warnings. Like, oh, I'm, I'm taking this I'm over. In. You're like, and I'm in. they blew the over out by like 15 points. It was absolutely insane because they just said, screw defense. We're just going to, they, they just, it was Turned a into an NBA all-star game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, speaking of uh, sports from around the world, uh, you've got the 2022 world games on here. 
Yeah, so I'm standing um, on the world's heaviest corner, which we stayed at. Um, it's actually a historical corner in which, uh, within four years, four of the tall, tallest buildings in the South were built simultaneously on this corner where we actually stayed. Uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm reading all the signs and stuff. Super cool. I'll have to show you. They have on each one. They have the date that they were made and like how big they were. I said all that because I forgot to talk about it earlier and I thought it was cool. So I wanted to tell you about that. But then I also saw this poster when I'm going around to each of these that it said, you know, Birmingham World Games 2022. So I'm like, what is this? You know, yeah. it seemed it seemed weird, but it, it seemed cool. So I pull up the schedule and stuff. We're talking about some dope, uh, some dope ass stuff, dude. It's like a week in July in Birmingham at all these different places. But we're talking. Uh, you know, there's American football, there's air sports, which I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, billiards, bowling, canoe, dance sport, fistball, floorball, flying disc, lacrosse. There is uh, Muay Thai. Uh, let's see if there's any other fun sumo, tug of war, underwater sport. There's wheelchair rugby, Bobby. And so, <laughs> that this is uh, a day pass. Um, uh, Oh, karate and jujitsu also, and kickboxing. A day pass, $35, bro. Uh, so we're going? What is uh, this? Yeah. Uh, it's a week in like July. I think it's the 7th, uh, oh. 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. So there's yeah, a bunch of days. My wife and, uh, I mean, obviously we could go for like your it's birthday. $35. But we're... Well, it's a $35 day pass, and it's just Birmingham. So it's like three yeah. hours. We're not talking like we need to, you know, uh, spend uh, spend our whole life there or anything. But I mean, you know, it's just a super cool, super cool yeah. thing. So, you know, it's in Birmingham get, are, this year. Have, are, are the schedules of events released yet? Yeah, that's the, we need the, to take a look at that. That's the link that I sent you. Nice. Yeah, we will be so, looking at that for show. Yeah, uh, so. But the. Uh, the uh, NBA Finals, uh, I think the Warriors are one game away from beating the Celtics. 3-2 uh, as they, of today, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm hoping the Celtics can come back and, and win it, but, uh, I, I mean, I think that the, the Warriors are just too overpowered, man. Yeah, I well, I, I mean, again. Steph is having such a dominant uh, a dominant series, and and Andrew Wiggins is having a really good season. Our season uh, series, but Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown, Jalen, Ta uh, Jason Tatum, not having a great, great series, which is definitely a, a you know effect. I mean, and the 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 Celtics have the size advantage, uh, and and so it's it's interesting to see. I mean, we'll see. We got one more game, and uh, you know, I guess next week we'll be able to talk about an NBA champion. Um, but I mean, like you said, it could go either way. Yeah, but. All right, so we're going to do games of the week a little bit different, but we are doing games of the week, so let's uh, let's uh, hit games that up. Of the week. Bobby and Brandon do the work, so you don't have to. The best from around the NHL and what to watch. All right, so we're doing games of the week a little bit differently. We are talking about over on Action Twenty Four Seven. They've got futures bets for the uh, <clears throat> Stanley Cup final. They've got they, the Consmite winner. The I, uh, I just wanted ahead. to. I'm sorry. I wanted to interrupt real quick and say that this is they're going to be gone by the time this releases. So yeah, we will be picking. I just wanted to make sure you didn't that you, you yeah. weren't touting that they were going to still be available. No, sorry. Yeah, that so is sorry a good point. Yeah, no, so, no, sorry good point. <laughs> so sorry to interrupt. So sorry to interrupt, Bobby. So sorry to interrupt. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we're going to do the Conn Smythe, the uh, uh, the winner of the series, the correct uh, ser uh, series scores, and when will the series end? So let's start out with the Conn Smythe. Um, uh, but we're also we're doing five dollars, and we get to pick how we put how we divvy up that money with a minimum yeah. of a dollar. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with the Conn Smythe, or we want to start with our series winner. Uh, <clears throat> let's start with the con smith and work our way or let's want to do the series winner because i think a lot of that hinges on that like it builds yeah exactly it's gonna build on yeah it, so yeah um for me i'm doing i would i'm gonna use two of my dollars i'm going uh, only because i'm gonna do a dollar and everything else 
uh, okay. Colorado Avalanche. I mean, I think okay. they are just what we've seen such a dominant performance. I, I do not see them slowing down whatsoever. Okay. Um, Your odds on that are minus, minus 189. 189. Okay. Um, so if you want to go ahead and type that, uh, type that up in your section, uh, $2 on, uh, Colorado at minus 189. Um, so my series winner, I'm actually going to go with Tampa. Um, uh, don't do ML, do s- series line, do SL or wow, series yeah. line. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to actually go with, uh, Tampa's uh, to win the series. I think Tampa's, I think that uh, we saw that even when they look like they're not going to be the team to win, I think that, um, you know, they've won it twice before. Uh, so I'm going to take the Tampa series line, which uh, is going to be sitting at 155. Us here. Oh, I don't know how much money I want to put on that, though. Um, I guess since we're doing it, I I am going to go with. I think I'm going to go with two dollars as well. I like that a dollar on the rest. Um, That is a a solid number. So um, so two of mine. On the Tampa series winner as well. Okay. Um, so what do we got next, sir? Which one do you want to move to? Let's do the con Smythe. And I think, uh, I already, I already teased mine a little bit, but I, I have, honestly, I'm, I was split between Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon's the easy pick here at plus 210, but I think Kale McCarr, uh, I, well, hold on. Looks like Kale McCarr is actually the, uh, more sure thing at, <laughs> uh, plus 175. I didn't realize that. Um, you know what? I don't want to play it that safe. So I'm going to go Nathan McKinnon at uh plus two ten. Okay. Um, not a bad, not a bad call. Mine is tough uh, because realistically it can go, it can go anywhere. If Tampa wins, uh, I mean, uh, do I, do I still, do I bet on my, on myself essentially that Tampa is going to win the series? Or do I, you know, diversify my funds a little bit and snag one of those Colorado players? Um, I think I'm gonna stick with. I think I'm gonna stick with my with myself. Uh, I, I believe in myself, and I'm gonna go with the only way that I actually think that I'm right. Um, and then that is gonna be. I'm gonna take Vassy. Uh, I think if uh, if Tampa can win this series, they are going to need a phenomenal uh, showing by by Vassy. So I'm going to go with Vassy to win the Con Smythe, and he's sitting at plus 400 right now. So I like that. I'm going to put a dollar on it. Nice. What uh, what nice. Uh, what price uh, are you throwing on? Uh, on uh, I'm numbers? just doing a dollar for all the rest of them. Okay. So yeah. So I think that I, I think I like that. Uh, and we got uh, plus four hundred on that, so that'll turn out a little money if uh, if I can get the W on it. I don't, I don't hate yours though. Um, so it'll be uh, be interesting to see which way it goes. Betting on betting on ourselves. Essentially, you lose two if you lose one of these. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's do. Uh, when will the series end? Because obviously, if we answer uh, the correct series score, that kind of answers when the series will end. Right. Uh, so let's do. Uh, when will the series end? I'm gonna take six games at plus two ten. Yeah, six games is 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 sitting there, you know, staring at me for sure. I think four games is, you know, either way a, a little silly. But seven. Yeah. The problem is, I would I would go with seven if my odds were a little better. But plus two ten, yeah. they're, they're the same for six and seven. Um, it, it, Colorado has home ice, right? They were the higher seed, so I'm guessing they mm-hmm. have the have the have the home ice advantage there. Is it a uh, is it a two two one one one? I think so. Mm. So six would be six would be in Tampa, right? Yeah. I think I'm gonna go six as well. Uh, I think I'm gonna go six yeah. games um, at um, at plus two ten for a dollar. So 
I, I like that. I like the, I think that either way, even if, uh, even if, if one of us loses, I think that's the safest bet. Uh, for sure. For the total amount of games. I think whoever can get that, get that third win will win that fourth game or uh, yeah. six game. Now for correct series score, uh, I think we're going to obviously be on opposite sides here. I don't know if you're going to go. I don't know if you can continue betting on yourself. I know I am. I'm taking uh, Colorado Avalanche uh, to win the series four to two. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna diversify my funds a little bit um, for correct series score, and I'm gonna actually match you on that. I'm going Avs four two. At plus four hundred, because if I'm wrong and um, the you know Tampa takes the series, I think I'm still winning money here. Uh, yeah, overall. So. Unless unless the Avs win in seven, then you're just kind of screwed. Yeah, but then I'm screwed anyway. <laughs> but then I'm then I'm screwed anyway. <laughs> then my then, but then my dollar then my dollar to uh, you know bet on the the Lightning four to two, it doesn't mean anything anyway, right? I mean, it's still a loss yeah. of a dollar. But uh, but if we both get Avs four two. At least I cover myself with a with a little bit of money at that plus four hundred. Yeah. So abs or two. Sometimes you gotta hedge them bets a little bit, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. While you get that in there, uh, we're gonna move on to our main topic of the day, which this leads directly into from here. Obviously, we're talking the Stanley Cup final, uh, the Avs versus Tampa. If you didn't already know, if you weren't keeping up with what we were talking about. Um, I think this is going to be a good one. I've got some stats here uh, to go over just uh, comparing the two teams. Uh, in this season's points, the Avs had 119 versus Tampa's 108. In goals per game, the Avs had 3.79 versus Tampa's 3.44. Goals against per game, Avs at 2.82. And Tampa edged them out a little bit at 2.77. The power play, uh, Avs at 24.4%. Tampa Bay at 23.6%. And then the penalty kill, the Avs at 70.2 and Tampa Bay at, a, at an astounding 80.9. And the leading scorer is Miko Rantanen and Steven Samkos. Clearly, you can see we have an offensive team meeting a defensive team. And this is going to be an absolute uh, amazing matchup. Uh, this is a matchup that I had that I called in my bracket challenge. Um, I haven't actually checked. I have the link. I haven't checked our bracket challenge yet. Um, right now, my total points is at 216. Yours is at 163. My possible points is 360. Yeah, I mean, you you dominate. We were actually really close after the second round, but then I didn't have any folks uh, moving forward. Um, I think it's I think it's over. I mean, I I, I don't think even think I can win. Do I even have a possibility of winning? I, what are my what are my, what are my points remaining essentially? Uh, points remaining. You, your total possible points are 163. So now you can beat my my current points. So hey, congratulations. I mean that that was one that um, we're talking series goes the other way, and you know we yeah. had a whole different whole different different ball game. But but I mean you you had had a really I mean really good bracket this year. So I mean nothing that I I could have really done. Yeah. Except for picked better. I could have picked better, and then I would have done better. <laughs> Uh, but other than that, if, nothing I yeah. could have done. If you had picked better and I picked a little worse, then you know, not control. I can't control it. Can't con- couldn't control it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Don't know what you wanted uh, from me. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I, I think you know we kind of already did a short preview with with what we were betting. Sure. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what the the most surprising of those stats that you threw out there um, was the was the leading scorers on the team. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Hasn't felt like Rantanen and Stamkos. I mean, I've been seeing their names pop up a lot for sure, uh, but but yeah. but but as as far as your points leader, maybe but, yeah, Stamkos. But me, Rantanen, that's a that's a little wild to me that that he is the yeah. He's if the you had, yeah, if you, if you had asked me who the leading score was, I would have said Cooch and uh, yeah, Kucherov uh, McKinnon. And, and McKinnon. Easy uh, would have been an easy. I locked it in on the trivia. You know, putting the most points you could put on it. Um, so that was yeah. that was now, intriguing to me. I got the I got this from the bracket at the bracket challenge uh, a little bit ago when I just I clicked the play. So this could be points maybe and not goals, but I would assume we. Just well, I, mean, I would imagine goals. that's what I assumed was his, it was points. Yeah, I assumed it was I assumed it was the leading scorers was the the, the, the person with the most points. Uh, the you know and I and maybe what made me kind of think like that was our our playoff pool for uh the fantasy goons but the fa- that doesn't that doesn't 
equate points necessarily. A game winner, it makes it something worth a lot more. A power play point yeah. um, is, is different. So, um, you know, now that you say it, I mean, Renton and score has scored me a good amount of points, and it, it, but it was just not something that like immediately would have clicked. I would have not guessed. Uh, I would have not guessed Renton and maybe Stamkos. Um, it's been it's interesting that uh, that that Tampa is that that defensive unit when it seems like it's been the opposite on their past two uh, Stanley Cup wins. You know, they they've been they've yeah. been the offensive side of things and not. Uh, uh, but I think it bodes well for them. To, to be that de- that defensive team obviously I, I you know I put my money on on Tampa to win this series and I just think I, I just think experience is going to play out uh more than 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 anything else uh, will I be surprised if, if Colorado goes out and wins no I wouldn't be surprised if Colorado goes out <laughs> and sweeps this series you know what I'm saying like they're that good that maybe I'm just seeing things incorrectly uh but I also think that that Tampa has had a much more difficult road to this point uh, through these playoffs. Yeah. Um, I think that the the Western Conference teams were making each other look better by having to play each other, um, and and Colorado was just levels above all of them. Whereas I, I mean, would you be would you be surprised sitting here if Carolina was the team that made it all the way through and was playing Colorado or no, Florida? No surprise or, at all. No yeah, surprise. It, I would have. Yeah, no surprise at either of those teams. Yeah, that. I mean, I mean, but even New York obviously was right there. It was two games from it. There, there's a lot yeah. of teams that that on the the East that we wouldn't be surprised. But I think that we would be very surprised with almost everybody, except for maybe Colorado, maybe Calgary, maybe Calgary. Yeah, if they came even out, even then, would right. a little bit of a shock. Yeah, even then, it would have been a shock, especially with the way Colorado ha- has played. I don't think that they've played anybody like Tampa. Um, and having to sit a little bit may change the game. And I'm saying this all in hopes uh, that uh, <laughs> that I'm that I'm right. You know, I haven't been right uh, up to this point. If I were to have made these points on the past two rounds, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but all right, let's jump over to our joke of the week. The weird Corey Perry. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't- Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me. It's time for the joke of the week. I want to start off by saying that loss of life is never funny. But sometimes. Sometimes things can just be naturally funny. I'm and not I'm racist, like, but <laughs> <laughs> this is what you this, said, Bobby. <laughs> this story is so is so astronomically insane that for a second I had to be like, "There's no way this isn't the Onion." Like this, there's no way. There's no way. It's not. This was originally from the New York Post, and this is on, uh, Aust- uh, I believe, Australia's yeah, uh, main I'm news site. A, I'm getting a page not found on it, um, so hmm. I'm just excited. But I'm not. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I've got the headline, yeah. and you know that's all I need to to. So, oh, it, it's it gets so much better than the headline. Perfect. A 70 year old woman in India was trampled to death. You know, rest in peace, by an elephant, and her corpse was then bizarrely attacked by the same beast at her funeral. Um, the woman was fetching water from a well in eastern India in state of Odisha on Thursday when an elephant came barreling toward her, according uh, to the print India. Uh, the tusked pachyderm had apparently escaped from the wildlife sanctuary, which is located in the neighboring state. I think it is pachyderm, then, right? Pachyderm, okay. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Sure. I'm trying to trust you. <laughs> um, then Sweet. when her family, when the woman's family was then performing her last rites before lighting a funeral pyre, the elephant again allegedly returned, grabbed her body. The threw her corpse in the air and then ran away with the corpse. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> who, What's who, good? Decided, who decided to invite the elephant to the funeral? Who thought that was a good idea? Second, what did she do in her life to to anger this elephant so badly? You know what? The first thing is a tragedy. Be- the second right. thing. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. What? It throws it up. He throws the body in the air, then runs with it. I'm like confused. She did something. I'm confused about like how like, I mean, 
how do you, how did you know it was the same uh, elephant? I mean, I guess they're I'm pretty assuming, unique. I'm, I'm they're assuming pretty that unique. since it came, I'm assuming since it came from a wildlife sanctuary that it's tagged of some sure. sort. Okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this elephant remembers though. Remembers <laughs> yes. something. <laughs> I'm saying maybe she like seventy years. Some, like, old, poach, yeah. she had like poachers or something. She she helped out some people that look. She she originally testified against this elephant and put him in bit him or him in the snitching. sanctuary. She was snitching. And it's been this elephant well because an elephant is not one something you want to backstab because they you remember. Know, elephants- and so it's been working at it. It, it has been planning this escape for years elephants been you know it's like uh it's cuffed up walking off it's like someone's snitching you know and i mean word on the sanctuary you know that that doesn't stay in locked in okay you snitching somebody gonna tell on you You know that's uh my my favorite thing on this australian news site is the article's not working but i do have a bunch of very 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 specifically targeted shirts and none of them are targeted to me or at least i don't think uh, this one, uh, built in the fifties, original, unrestored. Some, some stone, some parts still in work in order. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, I'm not sure what I've done to get the. Uh, there's one that has half of the American flag and half of the Constitution on it. So, uh, not sure. I mean, maybe this is specific to this Indian lady she was selling american gear or something i don't know man what a joke man! absolutely wild but all right now moving on let's move into what's snapping your stick bobby and brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks All right. We talked a little bit about it at the top of the show. Uh, I always have to deal with it around my birthday, but this year it was rough. Yesterday, when we left uh, my mom's house um, after being in the pool for a little bit, 101 degrees Fahrenheit. An absolute oppressive heat. Well, that, that wasn't even the heat just- index, brother. That was just the actual temperature. That's not even what it felt yeah. like. <laughs> it was so bad. And honestly, I just, I get it. We live where we live, but holy shit, is this heat snap my stick, man. It, like, and it, what happens is it causes a chain reaction. I, we get home super late last night, probably 3 a.m. My dogs start freaking out this morning, and I'm like, what is going on? The lawnmower, uh, who, the guy who mows our lawn, usually comes at around 2 p.m., was here at 7.30 a.m. because he wanted to beat mm. the heat, which meant my dogs are going psycho. And they can't go outside to go to the bathroom because he's mowing the backyard. So I'm stuck inside, tired, a little bit hungover with my dogs going psycho because they got to go to the bathroom. They see someone in their yard. I'm like, oh, my God, Uh, it's rough. This time of year is rough. But, you know, this year seems a little bit rough, rougher than usual with the heat. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be rough the rest of the week. I'm I'm with you. I, uh, you know, I mentioned it at the top, but I didn't get into it too much. Uh, because I did yeah, see that yeah. you do it on the snaps, my stick, and I don't want to yeah. straight up. Yeah, steal my, it I could have been you. talking about the Miami Heat. <laughs> That's from, you know I knew though I knew you weren't. Talking yeah, about yeah. The Miami Heat. You weren't. I knew yeah. you were. Uh, it, it, yeah. it was Luckily, hot. my crawfish boil is also a pool party, so we'll be able to cool off a little bit in the pool. Doubling up, doubling up. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the only reason I'm coming. Oh, that and the beer. Uh, <laughs> uh, mine. Uh, you know, I. It's silly. It's silly, but. It, there's you know that modello commercial with damian lillard that again it's always amazing to me that beer wants to inspire my life you know uh I, it's it's the it's got the music in the background like like if damian lillard uh you know damian lillard wouldn't have been mvp if he didn't show up at the rec gym before it opened so that had me questioning there could be a couple <laughs> options that like young Damian Lillard was given, you know, and trusted enough to have a key to the rec center gym for four hours, or this man was breaking in and he's no role model role model and he shouldn't be advertising beer. And also I don't get it. Like 
Modelo, yeah. Modelo didn't help him become an MVP. If this was like Gatorade or something, maybe. But like, was he busting into the rec center gym with a sixer of Modelo and like training up <laughs> to be? I'm just, I am blown away. So now, underage drinking. There's also someone in his life that's willing to buy him a six pack of Modelo. He's breaking into the rec gym. And also, nobody's ever said anything about it until Modelo like puts him on blast. Like, what if there's yeah. like a rec center worker that's been there for years that is now fired because they find <laughs> out that he's been. Oh, well, it had to be you, Eugene. You're the only person working when Damian Lillard was wor- going you know, to this rec center. Um, or even better, Damian Lillard's folks like had him a home gym or something. And they're like, what the hell, Damian? We gave you everything. <laughs> and you're talking about going to a rec center pre- before the hours opens up. So, you know, there's just a whole lot that I got from this very small uh, commercial from, from Damian Lillard. Just trying to make some money and, you know, drink some Modelo. Yeah. but. Speaking of beer influence in your life, I do have a uh, story uh, from last night. So I am not good at bowling, but I am good almost at every sport when I have a beer in my hand. And we tested it last night. We first came across this, uh, this you know, hypothesis when we were at the beach and we were playing spike ball and I was just not doing very well. at it. But a beer in my left hand, I became like an MVP. I was, it was my first time ever playing. I was kicking ass. Yesterday, I was throwing gutter ball after gutter ball because I just wasn't carrying, I guess. Threw it's a beer balance. on my left hand. Three three strikes in a row. It's, it and I just balance. destroying it. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it I was, was one hand in the ball the whole time. Yeah, it's got to be a balance because I'm just naturally accustomed to having that beer in my hand. So it centers let me. me. Tell you, let me tell you, I'm going to counter your point. I, it may be every game but one because you are not great at Beersby. Uh, oh, I've only played it once. So I need to try it again. But I'm also but not you, good at beer. Well, ball. you also so games you, that in, so games that involve beer, not good at. Now, if, I have if, a beer. It's a, if it's a if game, it's officially a drinking game, Bobby's garbage at it. No, Don't, no. Every if everybody's but, li- living on a equal playing field, but maybe you hate golf. But maybe if you just had a beer the whole time and you just swung yeah, one hand. But some would also say that golfing is kind of a drinking game for some people. No, it is. So but, it's kind of an in between. Yeah. Oh, well, but your problem oh. is you've never held the beer while doing it. You yes. just been drinking separately. Dude, but tell you, you what, I could be I could possibly be the best NASCAR driver in the world if I just have a beer in my hand. Let's let's test. I it. mean, for yeah. sure. They wouldn't hey, let now they wouldn't hey, real quick, now they no. wouldn't let me into laser tag with a beer in my hand. And they also wouldn't let me get on the bumper cars last night with a beer in my hand. So sounds like sounds like you didn't put a beer in your back pocket and just take it in. What are they gonna do? chase you once you're in the laser tag bobby i mean this is you gotta think man i I thought that you were my buddy and really that comment right there well i i chugged it before i went in because i last thing i wanted was to run around a quarter and smash into someone and break the glass next thing you know i'm sounds like the last thing they wanted carry it for carry it as a weapon dude yeah it's a melee weapon (laughs) that's what i'm saying dude they get close enough yeah (laughs) yeah but all right everyone thanks for joining us this week uh we'll see you next week and uh, hey enjoy some uh, stanley cup playoffs thanks for listening to the pucks out podcast to see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to check them out on twitter and instagram at pucks out pod 